We like to look at nice things. Pretty things, shiny objects, and good-looking, wealthy people. Perhaps this is one of the reasons that people like to visit the Rijksmuseum. However, museum objects hardly represent the lives of the majority of the public at their time. But if you look closely, you will catch a glimpse of the struggle of everyday life of the not-so-fortunate. Artists throughout the ages have always been interested in capturing the lives of the poor. And so this raises the question, is there beauty in poverty? It's important to understand why we see so many rich people hanging on the museum walls. And really, it's quite simple. They had the money to commission a painting. A standard portrait like this could cost as much as a year's wages for a common worker. But this did not mean that artists were only interested in the lifestyles of the rich and famous. In fact, there were quite some painters that captured the lives of the less fortunate. However, in the 17th and 18th century, these paintings were often still commissioned or bought by the people who could afford them in the first place. In short, they were made to entertain the rich. And so, as a result, the poor were often badly characterized and ridiculed in these paintings. Someone who was genuinely fascinated by the poor was Ren Ren van Rijn. He went out with his sketchbook on a daily basis and captured drifters, common workers, street children and stray animals. These subjects had something that only they could offer him. He could catch them off guard while doing what they did best. Survive. And these sketches were not meant to be sold. Rembrandt actually used them as studies mostly for his biblical paintings. Now, let's fast forward to the 19th century, when industrialization and urbanization started to change the world. In the art world, this change was met with a new art movement called Romanticism, scenes filled with the sense of nostalgia. But then, as a counter-movement against these idealized subjects, artists from the mid-19th century and onwards started to take an interest in the real life of the working class. Towards the end of the 19th century, painting the lower class was something that was done by many artists. Artists such as Van Gogh and Henrik Breitner did this as well. These painters preferred working class models for their work. Laborers, servant girls and people from lower class neighborhoods. Breitner saw himself as le peintre de peuple, the people's painter. In 1886, he moved to Amsterdam where he recorded the life in and around the changing city in sketches, paintings and photos. These photos give us a glimpse into the lives of the poor in the city of Amsterdam. By this time, poor people were no longer ridiculed, but pictured as they actually were. Hardworking people just trying to get by. Today, poverty is still a huge source of inspiration for artists, in many forms of art, music and film. Some of the most compelling movies of our time are set in extreme poverty. Films such as Cidade de Deus, a story about two kids from the slums of Rio, each pursuing their dreams. One to become a photographer, the other to become a drug kingpin. Or The Pursuit of Happiness, starring Will Smith and his son Jaden. A heartbreaking story about a father who struggles to make ends meet, provide for his son and his unhappy wife, and to pay for his study to become a stockbroker. Good filmmaking allows us to feel a connection with the characters and with their everyday struggle. As viewers, we recognize this struggle and maybe even feel a little bit better about our own lives. These feelings all come together in Sean Baker's movie, The Florida Project. Set in the poor outskirts of Disney World Orlando, we see the world from a young girl's perspective. Her happiness and innocence is in sharp contrast with the reality that she lives in. That of poverty and the sadness of a drug-addicted mother who sells her body in order to keep a roof over their head. As happy as she is, as a viewer we feel a sense of sadness for the situation that she's in. Because as adults, we have developed an understanding of the harsh reality that is yet to fall upon her like a brick wall. The struggles of society have always had a big influence on art, and art has always had a big influence on society. 
Artists throughout the ages have tried to capture poverty. Millet, Rembrandt, Courbet, Van Gogh, Breitner, and many more. They show us a side of the world that some of us are not familiar with or would rather not see at all. But perhaps there's beauty in poverty because there's beauty in people. Our ability to empathize with others is what makes us human. We want to see real stories from real people who live through the struggle of everyday life. We need this in our music, our movies, and our museums. But what do you think? Is this art? Let us know whether you think poverty can be art or not, and let us know your suggestions for future episodes of Is This Art. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe.